And can you hear us? Stefan? No, he obviously can't hear us. Almost there. This is beginning with the usual professional excellence from, uh, from <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's dived out. Um, anyway, we're going to get started because we've got limited time um, and Steph will sort his sound out and then he will join us when he is ready. Um, so thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Um, my name is Dan. Uh, Stefan is the camera that's moving around a lot. Um, and we are here to talk today to Johan Vigru. Um, uh, we're very lucky to have him. Johan began his training in 1998 when parkour was still a fledgling discipline. Training alongside his older brother, Stefan, and alongside pioneers such as David Bell, Seb Godot, Michael Ramdani, and others, Johan initially doubted he'd ever be able to perform such dynamic movements. But by committing himself to the practice, he came to demonstrate great aptitude for parkour and began pushing the boundaries from there. Just a few years into his training, he starred alongside Seb Foucault and Jerome Benawas and Stefan in the seminal Channel 4 documentary, Jump London, which catapulted parkour into the mainstream spotlight, uh, and pretty much birthed an international movement. Johan went on to be one of the original members of Parkour Generations, teaching and performing from 2007 to 2010 in the UK and worldwide as the art hit the big stage. He went on to help develop Parkour professionally in Thailand and then Bali before returning to France, where his first son was born in 2015. Johan more recently took the lessons he learned from many years of Parkour and applied them to the sport of golf. Uh, in which he now competes in his native France, which may sound very, very different from parkour, but we're obviously going to get into the similarities of that at some stage. So welcome, Johan Vigru. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, man. Cool. It's good to be here. And Stefan, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. I had a technical problem for a few minutes. All right. Just, uh... <laughs> just in time. Just in time, he's there. Papa. <laughs> so we've got both. For those that don't know, these two are brothers. Obviously, um, they they may not look like it. Stefan obviously looks much older now. But I don't think that's they're, yeah. They're I'm quite sure close. That, that, that obvious. <laughs> they're quite close in years. <laughs> I'm way better looking, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and both of them, both of them began training parkour pretty much at the same time. Is that right, Yo? Do you got, do you train as, I know Stefan's story. We obviously had Stefan on a few weeks ago and he, he told us the story of how he first went and found David training and, and, um, began his training pretty much straight away. Were you there right at the start or was he like a day later or what? No, I think he was the guy in his story of maybe a few months, weeks. I don't know. It wasn't straight when Stefan started, but he was the, the same year and, the same period, so it must be like uh, yeah, a few months after. That's what, so uh, after. You know, that's what a younger brother do. They watch first and then if, you know, it makes sense, then they join. <laughs> yes, it, <laughs> if he's not dead in a week, maybe. <laughs> That, it, that would be the sensible approach. And uh, I guess it always, I, I knowing you both pretty well, it always has struck me that Johan is probably the more sensible of the two. Yeah. Is that fair to say? It's, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, which isn't saying much, though, because the the benchmark, the bar you're comparing yourself there to, to Stefan, is, is, is a, it's a low bar. Let's put it that way. So, it's not saying much. And in fact, Julian, your your youngest brother, is definitely more sensible than both of you put together. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I, I, I think my parents realised they had to do something about that. So. <laughs> Third Just time lucky. The draft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Third time lucky. Um, cool. So, yes, we're, we're really good to have you both here, obviously. Um, and we're going to go into Johan's story as much as we can. Um, so, Yo, what we'd like to do is begin by asking you about your experience in the early days of parkour um just you know tell us a little bit about how when you did start a few months after steph um what it was like for you beginning parkour in those early days what did you experience um so yeah i think this is the same person who introduced uh, parkour to me and stefan he, his name is ken the, the, the friend we, we used to train with like doing, <laughs> i was also trying break dancing with stefan before so but nothing to remember but yeah i mean uh, i was I was, I don't really know what I was doing when Ken talked to me about it and he said we were going to this and meet David and I was okay so I didn't know who I was going to meet, what he was doing and what to expect so I was really just following them and then we, we, we went to this and to the, the, the big staircase, the gym staircase in this, the famous one. 
and I remember we, we met David and the idea was just like, like usual, follow him. So he, he told us we were going to move and it was, uh, it would be, it would be helping us if we need it. And then I was just following stuff. But as I told you, I mean, you uh, sure you everything said you said. Are you huh? sure you offered, yeah. Like, you offered help, really? Wow. Lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he told us he would help if we could, uh, he could do it. Maybe it was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't himself. But yeah, I mean, as I told you, the first times I went there, I, we, he was doing, you know, the, the staircase can be intimidating. I mean, for, from the first time practicing, it, it can be, it looks very rough, rough. You have edges all around. The cat lip is quite long when you have never done it before. So he was doing stuff I, and I, I wasn't even noticing or paying attention. I, was, I wasn't even scared because it was so far out of my understanding. I, I couldn't, I mean, I, I wasn't scared because I couldn't see myself doing it. So I was just following. So he helped me climb the, the, the wall. Uh, I mean, he was, he was carrying me basically. So I, we, I mean, we, I, I don't remember everything, but I remember I was just following without being scared or anything because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't visualize anything. So, and, and then we went to um, a grass space, a kind of square grass space uh, surrounded by rocks and, and trees. And one of the famous games we have is like, go around and don't touch the floor. And I couldn't do it because it was too hard for me. But there, it, something clicked. I, I knew I, I knew I could do it. I don't know why I wanted to do it, but I knew I could. If I came back and came back and came back and came back. And then from this day, I didn't talk to anyone. I was just going there on my own, doing it, doing it, trying to do it. So I, it took me maybe two months going there every day to complete the, the route. And then I met some people along the way. They were training, like Sebastian and Mikael. I, I met them there. They were training also. And this is how it started. Just I had the feeling I could complete something. And then I just kept, do, kept going back until I could do it. And then I learned the hard way. So <laughs> I took many bails. Uh, I hurt myself a lot. But I learned how to complete the stuff uh, just because I wanted to do it. And at that time, I didn't know why. I just knew I could. So I... I kept pushing. I think you've been to that place, Dan, uh, um, the, the rocks track. With, with, there's a rock and a tree, a rock and a tree, a rock and a tree around. around I think you have uh, been there already. Um, yeah. Uh, by uh, the I, pool, I, by the big pool, you know, the dome pool. Do you, you have a, another path and then you can go. Uh, yes. It's not so impressive, man. It's just, it looks random. When you go there, it looks random. But for me, this it, is where it started for me. Yeah, but that's interesting, right? That um, I mean, I have seen it, and, and that is interesting in that um, it's the same all over the world. Parkour communities all over the world are kind of the same in that the the areas that parkour was born in, the training spaces that it's born in, and that people take on as their own, and they develop their skill, and, you know, same as you guys when you were training. Um, they're often really, you know, un they're not special places. They're sort of, they're, they're in no way do they stand up. They're not spectacular, sort of, you know, um, visually uh, pleasing spaces. They're, to most people, to non-parkour people, they're normally completely average, boring, <laughs> ugly, yeah, even ugly places, right? But for yeah. parkour people, especially if it's the place you started training and, and you started sort of honing your first skills, that place becomes incredibly special. Um, yeah. I think uh, and so those places must be very special to you two because that's where you you bled and sweated so much in the early years yeah it's a lot of memories emotions uh, adventures lived there and shared with friends sometimes so yeah for sure the place becomes almost like a person I I, I told you you know I used to talk to places uh, special places I spent a lot of time training or, or battling with myself uh, asking permission to the obstacle or the place can I please you know, go the other side. Can you let me in? Uh, and the answer was the answer was always the same. You know, just a static wall, basically <laughs> saying nothing, <laughs> just saying nothing, and uh, letting me do my stuff. But yeah, yeah, you, you, there's this, this sort of dialogue with the obstacle and yourself, and and yeah, the the place becomes more alive, and there's a story behind, and and a lot of memories comes with it. Uh, and and yeah, I always also uh, say thank you to the place. After I, I, I leave the place, like the time you like, it was always good morning and thank you for letting me play and then now goodbye. Uh, there's always a lot of respect as well with, with the obstacle. Hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting in that place. You kind of, it's an anthropomorphic thing, right? And that places become 
yeah they get they they have a personality for you mm, um yeah. for, a, for a practitioner they develop a personality in different places kind of have different personalities because they they, yeah. they offer you a challenge that that triggers something you that uh, and there's there's a fight right and then and and each each fight is different and then has to bring something out of you at a certain time with certain skills and certain reflection and there's a whole different ingredients that create the story and then this spot becomes very there's a feel to that spot then when was the last time either of you went back to those spots the original spots the uh, staircase for me it was two it was six years ago oh, yeah? yeah 2014 why i went and back you... i went back i saw julie uh, i saw julie right uh, there and it was that was thomas i was just coming back from bali and uh, i spent an, an afternoon training there and i met david and he fucked my day <laughs> he was being very, uh, he, he, very rude to me and he, he ruined my afternoon i was so happy to meet friends there and he, he ruined my day so that's why i remember it i remember this day <laughs> did, he, did he get you did he get you to do training again or what, what, no i what? mean no it was it was being rude i mean just yeah no we didn't even came to training because he wasn't in the mood of training and he right. was I didn't want to talk to him too long this day. Okay. It <laughs> wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't being nice. <laughs> and that's uh, so. I mean, is that is that a common experience? Do you guys think? Do you, is in your memories? It was there because David obviously he has this this is awe around him as you know one of the founding guys and this very uh, impressive athlete. Um, but um, what's your experience of him as a person? Then, you, you guys trained with him a lot in the early years and and learned a lot from him um, and kept up with him which is pretty rare so what's your impression of him now what you mean now is the 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 time that has passed and the reflection and all yeah that i mean lo- I, looking, i'm not seeing him much now looking back because obviously when you were training with him in the, in the day you were you were just young practitioners so you yeah. were just you were probably just learning and following and doing doing mm. you know what what any young apprentice in a, in a discipline has to do which is basically just um just soak up as much information as they can and, and do their best but now you you now you with the experience you've got both of you looking back um on mm. that experience of those early years yeah it's, it's always that? a it's always a sensitive topic to me because yeah. i'm i'm mixed between um uh, first of all i was very very close to him for many for many years like close to he was sleeping at my place and i was sleeping to his pretty much every day and and we were training at any time of the day so we were, we were really close. And when you're close with someone like that, you see intimacy and you see stuff like you see deep stuff that, you know, you cannot share with everybody. So, um, so uh, I've shared stuff that, that should remain private in some ways. But um, I guess overall now with time, I think um, I was grateful to have this opportunity to meet such a, an interesting man because from a, just from the parkour perspective, from, a, from an athlete perspective and everything I learned in parkour and everything I learned from him, watching him, uh, listening to him, observing him, uh, he's special. When it comes to parkour, he's a special guy because he, he, he really uh, d- d- dive, uh, dove, dove into parkour deep, deeply. He was, he was into his, 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 his family, his father's story. Um, and his quest for, for identity and life as well and happiness. So, um, and that was the only thing he, he was doing back then. And that was the only thing that motivated him. So he gave everything to parkour when parkour was nothing. That's why he, that's why he, he contributed to create it a lot. And it's very interesting to see, you know, someone doing that for something, such, such passion, such, such heart and create something. Uh, so that was very uh, in- inspiring uh, to see someone that dedicated to to an art or to a craft uh that was that was amazing um because you see him doing the impossible many times uh, overcoming challenges that you think that are crazy and they were crazy actually because nobody did them and just to see the mindset that that you know he keep repeating every day and every day and every day was that was i think i was fortunate to witness that and it was very inspiring it's very rare i had the opportunity to meet later on in my life different high level athletes, professional athletes, and they all share that, that kind of fiber. But he, I believe was on another level, you know, it's like well, in any sport, you have the, you have the best and you have this one guy. And I think it was this one guy in parkour amongst the best, the very best, because they, all the guys back then were very, very good. 
Mm -hmm. I think he had something, um, something unique. Probably everybody had something unique, right? But he, <laughs> he of course, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, he was, he was special in that sense. I've never seen that in any other athlete afterwards, you know, in football uh, or, or whatever, uh, or, or, or yeah. Um, but yeah, very interesting, I think. And then you're all the personal stuff. I would say we all have our flaws and, and stuff we have to work on in, in our lives to just be a better person and, and do better things. And he obviously had his demons and his obstacles to, to face. Um, and, and I guess that's what at some point uh, split, split our, our path in, in terms of a kind of a friendship level, you know. This is when I guess we, uh, as I grew up, I had to, to, to be more independent and be more myself. And in order to do that, I had to separate myself from, from, from someone that I was too attached to and too influenced. Um, so that's it. But that's more like a personal kind of journey. And, and as, I, as I said, everybody has his own demons and stuff they have to work on. It's just I know his because I was really close. Uh, but I don't think it was... It was worse that, than, than many guys, you know. Um, so that, that's more like the personal stuff. But from a, from a parkour standpoint, I think it was uh, it was a very interesting experience and a very interesting man. Johan? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, f from the parkour side, I, I think because I didn't know you, know, Max, back then. I, I, I met them many years later, actually. So I think parkour-wise, even if I didn't spend that much time with him, Everything we did when we were training, it was because of Stefan or David did it. And uh, so, and even when we trained with him, we knew he was in the parkour world. He was kind of very, very strong. Mm. I mean, it was his way of practicing. The Yamaks are very different in their way of practicing. David is, is special. And at that time, this is what I needed. Otherwise, I would have met the Yamaks. So I think David is, is yeah, like Stefan said, he's, he's, he's just the only one in what he does mm. and it, it helped me a lot to to dive into parkour yeah. and then on the other side he taught me that whoever is great at what he's doing it doesn't mean he's great at everything in life and when i was this young when i met him i thought like everything he said was true and then it was my my learning my my, my <laughs> i had to learn that that you have to pay attention to what people say and if you're good at one thing, it doesn't mean you're good at everything and you have to, to be careful and make your own mind because I, this is personal. But when I was training with the guys at least, I became, I started becoming in a war with the Yamaks. And, I, and when I reflect on this now, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know why I was, uh, you know, uh, angry at these guys. I didn't know them. So I now I, I, I learned this lesson and it helped me today to understand that you have to make your own opinion on everything. You don't mm -hmm. have to take what you've been told for granted. You have to think about what you, what you, what you really think. So, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he has his weaknesses, but I think he's, uh, yeah. it, was in the, it, it was inevitable for parkour growth and for parkour to become what it is now. He, yeah. Yeah. He was an obsessed man about parkour. I, I, I saw obsession, obsession to a high level. Mm. Uh, yeah, live it, living, in, living it intensely. It's, it's weird because uh, like back then again, you know, parkour wasn't a thing. So you, I just, I was observing a man who had this love and obsession for parkour when parkour was nothing. But everything he was saying, uh, thinking or doing was about parkour. Uh, and, and becoming better at that with so much intensity. Uh, it was just weird to see. Uh, but uh, you, could, you could tell it was real and it was, somehow there was value in that, even though it wasn't anything yeah. back then. There was a value in that, in that kind of mindset and, and, and the achievement he did in parkour. Well, it's massive value. I mean, I think I was discussing this just yesterday with um, with Arturo, one of the coaching team here. You know, looking at um, uh, examples like Michael Jordan. You know, who's the same if you watch that that last yes. dance documentary Amazing. series. Amazing. The, the same, you know, the the same in immersion, the same um, complete intensity and dedication to what you're doing. So that you know that that is all all of your thinking, all of your sort of any extra space you've got in your mind and your day is focused on that one task that one purpose mm. and i suppose any of the truly great um 
practitioners or innovators in any discipline or any industry, they're probably the same. They're, they're driven yeah. by the same kind of obsession. Um, yeah. it's, it's obvious in sport, but but it also exists in in everything else, in, in business, in education, in you know a, any other field of human endeavor. The ones that um yeah. that really that really sort of reach the stratosphere, they have to be dedicated to it, probably to an obsessive level. Um, to, to, to break that boundary and to go from being just one of the great one of the one of the one of the best to you know the 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 greatest of all time or whatever the or, or, yeah mm. the best so i think it, that there's huge value in that um mindset whatever discipline you're practicing so um and and it's a it's an interesting thing that where does that you know the question then is where does that mindset come from why do some people have it and some don't Mm. um is it and is it something yeah. you can learn is it something you can teach yourself through discipline um you know what for example why did you know yo you say you you went and you did for two months you just tried to do the same route um and try to complete it and you went back every day by yourself um you know why why is it that you did that do you think whereas most people they, they probably wouldn't do that right there's no reason <laughs> to do it there's no money there's no points no one cared about parkour back then um why, why did you do that for two months solid? That's the same kind of mindset, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is, I, I don't know if it's because it, it kind of um, reflects on what you say. I don't know if it can be taught because I know I'm like that. Everything I want, every time I want to be, to do something, I'm just obsessed. I, I can't take it out of my mind. I'm just obsessed with it. And then I have to understand why I'm obsessed, but this is usually how I do it. If I, if I want to do something, there's nothing else that matters. And uh, I just, yeah, I mean, I know I can do it. <laughs> I want to do it. I love it. And, and this, is, this is, at this time, I was so, I mean, I was, I was, I'm still, but at that time I was small, short, you know, and uh, I, I didn't live it very well <laughs> because uh, you have to be tall when you're, when you're young, you know. So I, I had a huge lack of confidence and I'm still feeling, <laughs> but I needed to feel good at something, I think. And parkour just showed me it was so so obvious to see and uh, and on the other hand it was kind of exciting you know you're moving you're jumping you're climbing you're you you feel you do something you feel you are doing you are accomplishing something you feel you're yeah I mean it's at that time and still today I think parkour is it's a huge tool to to self development to uh, to become stronger in every field and you can become stronger everywhere with parkour so. I needed to feel stronger and it came at the right time, I guess. That's very interesting, um, you know, to, to, to have to have that mindset. And it's, is, it, is, it, is that mindset becoming rarer, do you think, or is it becoming more common in the world? Do you think there are, do you think there are fewer people now that have the mindset of, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to, I'm going to throw everything into know. it. It's are we, hard to know. Are we it's losing that ability? I don't know. It's hard to know because I feel, Today, we can know more of the people because we're all connected with the internet and stuff. And be, before that, we didn't know. So I don't know. I, I, I hope we have more and more people like that. <laughs> I, I wish. And uh, I, think, I think we do on a level. I think we, there is a gap. I, mean, I think the higher people become higher and lower people become lower. <laughs> 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 This is what I mean. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think we are, we are more and more people because I believe we tend to become better as a human being. I mean, as a species, we, with time, we tend to become better. Yep. I yes. hope so. And I believe it. So that there's no reason why we, we are less now than 50 years ago to, to be on that path. I don't know. Do you think the do you think the advent of social media and the you know the proliferation of devices that means it's definitely you can you can definitely evidence now that that people are um, their attention span is low is shorter now yeah. generally right so people's attention spans are shorter they don't they it's harder to focus for long periods of time because people are so used to scrolling and 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 their brain gets used to just digesting yeah, yeah, a piece yeah. of information and then passing to the in a few seconds to the next piece the next piece the next piece so is that um is that going to limit do you think i mean that potentially we've been improving until now but potentially this will, <laughs> will fragment don't our tell attention me that. I'm, so much I quit, man. That, that, <laughs> that, that maybe we lose it right maybe we lose the ability to go yeah i mean maybe yeah I, I think it's a great thing to know that because for people for some people they i mean that it's, it's over i mean it's over they don't care about it but some, mm -hmm. for, for for the people who are looking to become better 
knowing this is going to help them actually like you know you're going to to become dumb <laughs> you can't focus on something more than 30 seconds this is not normal and i i i mean this is my belief i'm i'm not like into the numbers and stuff but if you if you take this out as um if on your own you want to become better you will and you, you, for me it's good to know this it's good to there is it's good to know there is a danger here there is a danger there there is a danger in social media and uh, i think it helps us basically we you can today we can uh, like see okay be careful we are becoming less and less focused or less and less um centered on, on well-being but now we can know it and then it's a choice do you want to become better or do you or don't you and i think today we are more and more to want to become better i don't know if it's that's clear but we are more and more to want to uh, improve and it takes more or less time but i think the more we go the more we want to become better and but with the more we see the people who are not becoming better <laughs> it's a it's a very optimistic viewpoint yeah gen- yeah but i mean it has to be it has to be yeah <laughs> stefan what do you do, do you agree with that are you, uh, do you, do you have the same tough. optimistic viewpoint <laughs> No, no, yeah, I'm very optimistic and I hope so. I just don't know if I'm right. Um, but it's a very new technology and we don't, we don't know yet what's the negative consequences or impact on, on, on human species in the long run. You know, it's still very new. There's, there's obvious dangers that we know now, but we don't know how we're going to correct them or, or handle them. And then what's the long run kind of, of consequences for us so there are obvious you know, dangers communication um, attention span as you said uh, uh, everything that's related to boosting your ego and everything that's uh, about about making the appearances you know more important than than the uh, the depths or, or other stuff so there's a lot of dangers obviously it's very young we are not educated to use those devices yeah. and technology properly and uh, we'll see how it evolves you know how, how we correct that and how we we become more conscious about the pros and cons of this technology and how, and what kind of choices we make on how we use them in the future. We'll see. Uh, there's obviously a lot of good stuff as well, as, as you know. Um, <laughs> you say we'll see like Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, we will see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. But I, I like to think positive about it. I hope we're going to be smart enough to make the, the best out of this and, and, and continue to evolve in, in, a, in a good way and more positive way and make, make ourselves a better version of ourselves. That's my wish and my hope, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. At least I'm working towards that. So we'll see. <laughs> we will see. Let's take it back to, to, to simpler times when, when there was before, before YouTube, before, before the internet, you know, exp- exploded. That's, that's, that's another was, thing. It was very fast and it's still very fast, right? Because when I started the parkour, we had no phone. So, no mobile phones so yeah mm. and it was 20 years 20 a bit, a bit more than 20 years ago so it, it's so fast from having no phone in my backpack i have a pretty good phone now that i can do everything from from pictures to videos to to all the social media it's crazy in 20 years time it's crazy yeah you can so access fast. all the information you need now whereas back then you know there was especially in parkour yeah. terms you know there was no information you could access really online or very very limited information um Certainly no, you know, video tutorials or anything like that. So it was much simpler time. Um, so yeah. let's take it back to Jump London, the documentary. I know a lot of people will be interested to hear about because um, both you guys were obviously heavily involved. And Jump London was, for anyone watching it don't, uh, that isn't aware, Jump London was the Channel 4 documentary um, directed by Mike Christie, um, which uh, pretty much um brought parkour to the english certainly to the english-speaking world um to the to the attention of the english-speaking world by bringing some of the original french practitioners including these two guys um over to london to utilize some of the the best sort of um or the or the most uh, iconic monuments in london um and you're welcome <laughs> and it it was it was huge there's no doubt it changed parkour overnight i mean it went from a couple of hundred people on forums overnight you know to like ten thousand the next day or whatever it was a massive massive explosion and that documentary got sold to i think 65 different countries i think mike could probably correct me on that but um so it went worldwide uh, and there's no doubt it had a massive effect um on you know it just made people totally open their eyes to this thing um so uh and and both you guys were involved here um 
So it'd be really interesting <laughs> to delve into that. I know that, um, for example, that Johan was probably the only one who was not seriously injured during the making of that, as in everyone else had was carrying injuries, um, but Yo was not injured. So that's why you were asked to do the majority of the action. Is that right? I'm just the best, man. <laughs> <laughs> or you're the best. No, yeah, I mean, the Ste two. Stefan was supposed to do it. Right? Stefan was supposed to do it at the beginning, but then his knee was out. Mm. And then I know Jérôme was injured. Yeah, he wasn't 100%. Yeah, he he was, had his, no, he wasn't. He, uh, Sebastian, he, he was always Sebastian. Like, uh, he was play, he was uh, like, you know, uh, playing with injuries. Was, like, some days yeah. he can push, sometimes he has to not push. Me, I was just, yeah, I was just going crazy. Uh, Fresh like a daisy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it was tough. Like I told you in my, when I sent you my, my, my text, jump London, I think, when one was one of the toughest jobs I had to do, man, because it was like almost every day shooting for 30 days. It, it was quite tough. And I had to, for the first time of my life, I uh, I was grateful Sebastian was here because he, he helped us recover and introduced us to recoveries, to massage, to ice bathing, you know, where we were doing this with Seb. And it, it was very hard physically to, to, to last the whole thing. Mm. And uh, I, yeah, I was lucky not to get injured because it, sometimes it, it was, yeah, you know how it is during shooting, you have to push the button on, off, on, off. And because I'm like the way I am, I wanted to give 100% and more every time I shoot. So it was very, very nice, but very challenging for me physically. And what was the, what do you think, what do you remember as being the hardest sort of piece of action in there? In the shoot, maybe it didn't make it into the final edit, but what do you, what do you remember as being the hardest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, um, I think it was one of the, I don't know why actually, it, it wasn't, it wasn't very hard what I was, I had to do, but it was on a rooftop, it was very hot, and I had to complete something I wasn't confident doing. It was like a, a tic tac between two slopes, and I had to do a 360 between the two slopes. Right. And it was very hard for me. I was lost in the air. And uh, this is where I almost got injured. And I had to do it and do it and do it again and again. And it was very hard. It was the end of the day. And I remember I, did, I, I, I had enough. <laughs> when you say cut, I had enough. I was happy that it ended, yeah. But overall, there, there wasn't one day that was very hard. It's just on the long run. Every day you have to wake up. You have to perform. And, and again, and again, and again, every day. And so it was... Yeah, it was a marathon more than a sprint, and uh, it was it was interesting. And was that your first production? Was your first shoot with the media, or had you done other stuff before? No, I had few done before. I think the first one was with Stefan in Germany for for Ford. We did a t uh, yeah commercial. We shot, we shot three days, I think. And then uh, we had the Nike shooting where Stefan injured, got injured with the knee. And I think it was, yeah, media stuff. I think it was it. These two things, yeah. and then it the, was the biggest. It was the biggest production we we worked on yeah. so far. Yeah, at, the, at this point, it was the biggest. And yeah, I remember Stefan when he, he, he because I wasn't planned on it. I think it was Kazuma who was planned on it at the beginning, and then he, he Stefan. I think he was in his bedroom. <laughs> like he, he come, he told me to come in the bedroom and he said, "Are you ready for World Cup?" And he said, "Yes," and that's it. <laughs> so <laughs> that was it. You're in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I was so excited at the time. I I stopped school and I oh, I got uh, I had issues with my family about that. <laughs> I decided to to quit school for for parkour. So I just I was so excited to be involved. It's okay. The family blame me anyway. They always blame me. <laughs> Wait, so yeah, you quit? Was, you quit school to do the documentary? Yeah, I to I I quit school to become involved in parkour, and then the documentary came a few a few months later. So, so that must have felt like you'd made the right step when that came. Yeah, you must have been like, okay, this is this is validation of my choice. Yeah, I mean, I, I was convinced at uh, this time was uh, I didn't really know about how to provide, but I was just convinced I wanted to to do more than just training uh, after school. Mm. But again, I think, you know, uh, we sp I spoke with Steph about that before uh, and that that comes back to the mindset, right? The kind of, um, you know, the Michael Jordan mindset, the obsessive mindset, of, like the fact that both of you were, were willing to quit 
school and give up on everything that society and your parents and everything was telling you this is what you should be doing in life um and you were both able to say mm, we're going to put that we're going to say no to all of that with no with no idea of what the future holds no idea of how because there was no industry around parkour there was no vocation there was no profession no teaching so there's no no concrete way that you know this can i can make a living i can survive doing yeah. this but you both made that choice whereas most people when it comes to pursuing their dreams things like that most people will will rationalize themselves out of that choice they yeah, will say yeah, no sure. i would do it but, but i need to do this to make money so they would stay yeah. in their job you know as you guys are both is, like nope we're gonna go do that yeah the thing is for me at a very young age i knew the the options school was offering me they were not good for me i knew it wasn't working for me anyway so um it was a pretty clear path the, the school path isn't good for me I don't see any hero or inspiration in my teachers in school. I haven't seen any. I've seen uh, sad, depressed people battling with their problems, telling me that I should follow what they say so I can become like them. Or, or So I didn't see the point for me. It wasn't inspiring at all. I didn't see any inspiring path or, or options from school. So, yeah. Whatever, uh, anything else was better, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I was supposed to be the, you know, the... Yeah, the we had hopes. I had to, yeah, I, was, I, mean, I mean, that's why it was very hard for me this time, because I knew I would break my parents' word. Yeah, because they Johanna, for so the record, you, you, yeah, Johanna was good at school. It was, it was, yeah. uh, it was, was brilliant. You know, school, it, was, uh, it was not good. have done a lot of stuff, yeah. yeah. It wasn't hard, yeah. And uh, my father, he had hopes. <laughs> and then uh, he had to, yeah. I mean, I was, well, I remember the, this day when... Uh, I was so scared to, to tell them, so I, I hid it. It took me a long time to, to admit. And once my, my mother said, oh, you, you've, been for, you've been in your school for a few months now. We don't see any, uh, you know, um, how do you say the notes? We, do, we, we don't see... Reports, uh, reports, school yeah. reports. And then, okay, this is it. So I, <laughs> I tell them, and I was ready to pack my bags and leave home. So I, I, I was almost certain my father would like say, fuck off, man, you, you go home, you go out of my home. So I, I, in my mind, this was it. That's why I was scared of, of telling them because for me, it was the end. I was- So how many months the... did you hide it from your parents? Uh, I think it was two or three months. Two or three months? They yeah. thought you were going to school, but you were just going yeah. training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it was one of the biggest challenge because I know I, uh, I have a, a relation with my parents. I always wanted to please them first. And then for me, it was the first time I was making a choice of my own. Mm. And it wasn't something that would make them happy. So once I did it, I was like, okay, I'm going to, to live outside. <laughs> and you were but 16? I was, really, I was ready. I was ready to, because my father came back to my room and said, you're going to school. And I, I told him, no, I won't. I wouldn't. I will not go there back. And uh, I was like, okay, should I pack my bags? I don't know. <laughs> but then no, oh. he was just disappointed, very disappointed. But uh, I had to make this choice sometimes. And they blame me again. In my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is because of Stefan. But yeah. <laughs> and I'm the bad seed, I'm the corrupted one. I corrupted the entire family. I well, I, I, mean, I agree with your father there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when he looks back, he knows, he, he knows what, what we've done is, is, is very brave. So when it, when it happened, he wasn't very happy. Of course, when you're a father, you, you want the best for your, your sons. Then he was thinking maybe we were going to not make it, which happened a bit. But uh, yeah, he didn't know what, what we were into and maybe he didn't trust us. And I think for today, if we talk about it again, he knows what we have achieved. What we have achieved and I think he respects what we've done. He knows it, it, it takes a lot to do that. So. Mm. It does. I mean, you. How old are you when you told him that? Sixteen. A bit more. It was because for jump London I was twenty. Yo, yeah, twenty. Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Okay. okay. I was nineteen. So I was young. In today's society, it's very young. Nineteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a baby. But old enough to make your own choice. Yeah. So um, I mean, it is a very brave thing to do. Both and both of you are now parents. So yeah. What do yeah. you? How will you react if your children sort of, uh, you know, as they become as they come of age, they're like, actually, I'm going to put ditch all that and go and do something that you I, think is crazy. It's very hard to know until it happens. But I, I want to be the father that you can talk to because with my father, communication is very hard. 
and you don't we don't talk much until it's too late so i want with my kids to have a, a healthy relation and even if we don't agree in everything and i think we shouldn't agree in everything we can at least talk about it and accept everyone's opinion for now he's, he's five years so for now he, he say he does what, he, what i say but later on yeah of, i want to be this father and i have this kind of relationship with my son and be able to talk and and ask him questions make him reflect on what he's doing and what he's thinking and if, he, if it involves making mistakes and I, I i can't i can't stop that you have to make your own mistakes so mm. at a certain point i will have to accept and this is this is the the apparent challenge you have to accept your your I think, uh, yeah and i think as a parent even more than accepting you have to support it that that's what yeah I you have to so I, yeah I, I true, will, I will have support, support it as much as i can um if my kid tells me uh i want to quit school first of all i'd say well done because school is is, is <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's harmful and i think we know that a lot of studies show that that school is not meant for everybody and it can be very damaging for, for a lot of people's future so first of all congrats man or girl Good job. <laughs> well done it's like the matrix so i'm playing <laughs> and two I, i'd be more interested in okay what do you want to do what what's If, if school is not triggering anything in you, what, what is then? And then I want to see some sort of, of intent, of, of passion, or will to do something uh, which is not school. So if you show me interest for anything else than school, then sure, I'll, I'll support you in any way I can. What I, what I will not support, though, if you just say, uh, I just don't want to do nothing, that, that would be problematic because living a life doing nothing, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a good life. So I, I, would, I would encourage and I would try to find what's what what interests my my child uh, mm -hmm. and support it in, in any way i can and do you think do, uh, do both of you think that um parkour having gone so deep into parkour you're now willing to you're more open-minded than the average sort of person or parent in that you're more willing to accept any pathway seeing as parkour was such a weird pathway when you guys were young <laughs> mm. um i don't know if you, I, this is the same question that comes again again i don't know if parkour is the cause or the consequence of who I am now. And I think parkour just showed me who I am and it was there already. I don't think parkour mm. changed me much. I think parkour just showed me and, and uh, I don't think I've changed actually, really. Or because of parkour, I don't think I, I really changed. I just, it just opened the door and then oh, this is who you are. Oh, this is who you are. And then you can be, you can be who you are. You can be some, somebody else. And I think I chose to be who I am. But I, I'm not sure Paco changed anything deeply inside me. I'm not sure. I don't know yet. No, you're still yes, young. It's, it's more like it revealed, uh, yeah. revealed part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Which is which is obviously a power of any discipline like that. In that, in that yeah. it's, it should be a transformative practice, right? That, yeah, um, it's, it's that, a tool that again. That teaches yeah. you self-knowledge. Yeah, it's, it's a tool to help you yeah. Yeah, re revealing uh, layers. Uh, deeper layers i guess or, it's just a tool and 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 and, and yeah there, there's more than parkour to help you doing that you know as we know there's golf <laughs> yeah there's golf. i mean let's go into that let's <laughs> let's go into that the golf thing um because you know this it's a it's a good um lead into that because not only does parkour <laughs> sort of help you understand yourself which you can then apply to anything it is also what is often um it's a great example of what's re referred to in the in the sports education world as a donor sport or a donor activity which means if you practice this it will it will donate um it will transfer abilities to other sports and other skills so it's, it's kind of a foundational fundamental skill set that by practicing it will improve and can can improve any other sport Um, and can add to any other sport. So if you take a football player and you introduce them to elements of parkour, their their football capabilities should increase because they will fill gaps in their football training yeah. through the parkour because parkour is so yeah. varied and so wide it can fit into any gap in a way. So so it's kind of a donor sport um, in that way. And and yo, you've now moved into golf um, and and taken that up pretty seriously, probably just as obsessively as you did with parkour. Yeah, and, it's really the same. Yeah. <laughs> and you're you're practicing and you're competing, um, which is which is awesome. So what what is it? What have you found between that links the two? Because obviously, physically, they're pretty far apart. Nah, yeah, my physical. This is the the real downside. That's why I, I will never. Even though I'm not I'm not training as much as like it's, it's not even we can't even compare. But I will never let out this physical training because yeah, we can't talk about physical training with golf. 
right. I mean, the, the practice itself is not in, enough. You have a good walk, and if you're fit enough, it means it's nothing. But and actually, golf can be. That's, that's why I, because golf is mainly the same movement again and again. If you are not fit, you can get injured. Actually, mm. so this, this is the danger of golf. And uh, so I th- and now we, do, we we can see today with the new athletes, they are all athletes. So they all train physically. They are all monsters because they know they have to be strong to to, to perform. But but yeah, I mean, besides that, I don't know, man. When when I when I say go, now I'm talking about it because I, I this is what I do and I love it. But before, at the beginning, I was like afraid to talk about golf because how can someone like practicing parkour every day can can go to golf? What the fuck, man? What did happen? <laughs> but I, I don't know, man. First of all, golf, and I I love nature, even if it's not like. Uh, raw nature this is when you're in the gulf you're like surrounded by nature and it's so amazing where i live man i can see i can see the sea i can see forest pines i can hear birds i can it's it's, it's just that i'm happy and then i don't know man golf is is uh i I can be the same i can be obsessed with golf it's the same so I'm, i'm really happy to find something i can be obsessed with and it's the same feeling with golf i think i will never see the end of it i will never see the end of it it's it's like every day it's it's new again it's uh every day i think i understand something and the day after i think i i i just i'm just just so bad and i have to relearn again and like in parkour um most of the time we <laughs> the fdf thing you know you have and sometimes you have to in parkour, what is that what is that what does that mean the fts thing you have to explain oh, that's that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> and what, how, what is it? how did you apply it? How do you apply it? Yeah. And now, now I can see that I, there are more, there are different levels of fuck that shit. There is the fuck that shit I used to to use a lot in parkour, with, and it involved anger and adrenaline. And I can, I could complete a jump or a challenge when I switch this button and I become angry, basically, and I just pump myself and I do it. And in golf. There is no way you can. It's, it's, no, you can't. You can't do that. The more you you go into this mode, the more you will fail. Mm. So actually, this showed me another switch, which is the real one. Actually, the, the one that I should use more often is really the let go, the pure let go. You have to be to let go of control. You have to let yourself be with the movement and just let go. Trust yourself. And I don't know in parkour you have it, but it's in golf that, that I. Understand, I understood it the most. It's playing golf. I, I really understood the, the meaning of letting go of things and just accept that you even maybe today you will play bad, maybe you will play well, but you have to be committed all the time to your shots and just let go. Be peaceful. Be peaceful and then uh, be happy what happens. And I remember in parkour, I was more with the anger and adrenaline side, adrenaline inside, and not so much with the peacefulness. Of, of letting go and i think le- golf actually taught me that that i can apply in parkour and parkour taught me a lot of things that i can apply in golf but i think this is the two way things i learned a lot of things in golf that i didn't see because it is in parkour but i, I didn't see it so on on my path this is, this is this is on my learning curve i had to go through parkour even if parkour will never end i think i i learned enough to move on to the next step for me and then my next step today is golf and it, it challenged me man it's for me golf is harder than parkour so <laughs> when you hear it man it's fucked up but for me golf is harder it's, it's so hard for me in my mind so psychologically or technically yeah. or what psychologically psychologically yeah it's very hard why because so when you play a golf game you have to be there for for four hours let's say four hours you, you play for four hours if you miss just one shot it can screw your game it can screw everything in four hours and even if sometimes in, in parkour you play this game like let's say let's do a thousand gems if i miss one i start over you don't do this every time mm. and in golf it's every time you play it's like that every time you play you just miss one shot then you're fucked 
So <laughs> when, like you, like when it, you want to reach perfection. Right. I feel like Sorry? it requires a high level of consistency in golf. Yeah, you have to be consistent. Yeah, this is consistency. Basically, this is the game of consistency. In parkour, you, you, you have it, but you can choose. Mm. And in golf, if you play the game, you, you play the game or you just don't. But if you go for the game, it's four hours game, 18 holes. And you have to be perfect on every shot if you want to, to, to perform. But is it, could it be that that's to do, again, that's to do with your mindset, maybe, in that whatever you sport, whatever sport or activity you tried, you would probably find the, um, the, the path, the hardest path in it. You'd yeah, probably find sure. the path to perfection and then think, right, this is, and therefore you would understand what makes it truly difficult to master. Because, I, I mean, any sport in the world, any physical activity probably has that yeah. level of in, incredible difficulty to master at the highest yeah. level, right? So, and only the only people who will understand that are people that with a certain mindset to go into that. For you know, for example, there are many, many, many tens of thousands, millions of people who play golf who don't think of it. Yeah, that way, yeah, yeah, it's true, man. Right? True. Who just throw, who just hit the ball around, and for them, it's just a Sunday walk, and they just they don't really care. That's and and then maybe they get angry when they miss a shot, and they're happy when they get it. But they're not really into the whole. They haven't thought that deeply about it, right? So, yeah. I suspect it might just be your. You would find that in any sport you did, probably. Yeah. Right. I'm sure. I think golf, and actually, um, a, a few months ago, I I, I had to dig to dig a bit in my within to 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 to, uh, to understand where where I stand today and what, what I'm doing, and um, maybe maybe golf came at the right time because I, I told you when we are off, when once I become a dad, this is when I met the golf actually, and I knew I wanted to be a dad. Uh, because my 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 father wasn't um, wasn't there so much with the forest when we were young, and I wanted to to be there for a lot, maybe too much for my first son, and I knew I wouldn't have time to 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 practice as I practiced uh, parkour, and maybe golf is a way for me to to have a, a passion and obsession, but less demanding on the physicality and then I can spend less time on my conditioning and more time on actually playing and playing the game. So this is, this is, I, I haven't answered the question yet, but I think it might be one reason for, for me to play golf. It allows me to, to spend my time more on the game rather than physicality. And because I mean, you know it, I'm, I'm not a physical guy. I, I for parkour, I, I train on it because I have to, <laughs> but this is not my, my drug. Physical I mean, conditioning is not my drug. I do it because I need to, but uh, mm -hmm. this is not my. Way. So maybe this is some reason I go to a sport more um, peaceful physically, and I, I still have the same challenges for my mind. So I don't know. Maybe. Mm. And you got. I know you guys still. You live close together now, so you guys train. You go out and train together. I because mean, I know you still go and do some some parkour stuff together regularly. Um, uh, what's that like now when you train now together? <laughs> Is there is there kind of rivalry between you training now? Was there rivalry not, when not, you started? Not out? at all, not at all. No rivalry. <laughs> I, 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 kick, I kick his ass same as before. Yeah, there is no rivalry. <laughs> My, okay. Honestly, the, 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 yeah, I mean the training we have today is is what I love. And for now, I don't. I train alone because I, I want to 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 still be able to carry my son. Yeah, but when we train together up. with Stefan, man, this is just amazing. This is what it was like when we started. It's just like random challenges and we just end up laughing or being scared because someone is feeling hot today and wants to do a tricky jump and, and that's it. But it, yeah, it's, it's amazing because it didn't change. The, mm. What we had back then when we trained together is it's very simple. It can last an hour. We do twenty jumps, but the the way we do it is just the same. It's it's funny that it's more than twenty years after we just catch up now. We live in the same place and we train parkour the very same way we used to train more than twenty years ago. We're just yeah. back to basic basic stuff. And the weird thing is that it's not boring at all. You know, we still enjoy oh. the same the same way. It's it's very weird. And yeah, so it, it's very a lot of fun, less pressure because I guess that's the only big difference is that back then. I, anyway, I put a lot of pressure on myself to to achieve and, and, and to be better and to, to, to reach higher and longer. And But there was this kind of a performance, uh, you know, focus that was present in, in, in everyday training. But today is just the fun. Even though the challenge is here, 
there, there's there's less pressure. But um, yeah, back to basics, really. And I know it's a very trendy thing to say, but we really are just training the same way we, we trained before, which is the very basic way. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And I think, you know, as we run, you know, parkour academies and we teach people and we always have to come up with, with kind of new education uh, models or speech and, and whatever. But essentially, it's a, I, I personally, what I love when I very first started is still what I love 20 years later. Simple challenges, uh, challenge yourself. You think you can do, do it and face it. Be honest, um, work hard, be true. Uh, the same values and, 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 and the, the little you know, rivalry re- re- we have and the competition, the, 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 the gentle competition we have, teasing each other and uh, yeah, being better, improving, improving ourselves. It's good fun, simple mm-hmm. stuff. But uh, uh, technically speaking or visually speaking, we look very simple. Um, <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> just just take it it's just a mind game <laughs> yeah. no. but that's Physically. the i mean but that's the best kind of, I, I i you know i completely agree and i i think that the um those elements of training are what but that generation certainly um encapsulated really well um and kind of embodied really well um and it's a very healthy thing, right? That approach to training in terms of, like you say, the, the sort of almost, it's a light kind of, um, the light rivalry that exists between practitioners. You know, it's not even a spoken thing really, but it's, they're kind of, they're sort of, you know, you're both trying to get the jump and, and you have a, and it, but it's fun. It's a fun form of sort of friendly competition. Yeah. The original I, think I think it's like, it's, it's, both, it's both of us saying, we're here to walk. We're not, we're here to have fun for sure, but we're here to give the best of ourselves. And I would mm. expect that from you at every time. And it's okay for you to expect that from me at every time. And then we will, we will be reminding that to each other the whole time. Yeah. Through jokes, through laughs, through fuck with that. Or you, yeah, I think that's, that's really about, we're here to get better. We, or otherwise we just stay home and do nothing. But if we go out and train, let's do it properly. And I expect the best of you and I expect the best of myself. And we're here to remind each other that the whole time. And that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of an accountability piece right it's, it's um that's that's a, an accountability thing that happens between practitioners and friends and and brothers where you're you're effectively that's the good thing about training with with at least one other person who understands your training because they will keep you honest they will keep you accountable to to you know to, to what you should yeah. be doing and and and, and um, not slacking off too much but it, yeah, it's well, never it's never in an aggressive or confrontational way but you sort of, sort of know that they're 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 going to push you a bit and you're going to push them a bit and and make sure that you're both working which is really really good and healthy way to do it i think yeah, yeah. for sure i mean when we train together i know what we what we do at the end what i decide to do alone and what we do together is, is different we do more when we're together hmm. maybe i go a bit more out of my comfort zone. i i know i go out but when we're with him sometimes i go in his games and i know it's it's, it's tough for me and maybe i wouldn't go on my own in this hmm. kind of game so so one question we had was that was this was it always that way? Like, um, was there um, when you were both beginning, was there any kind of sibling rivalry between you that was more intensive, or or was it like was it always very sort of egalitarian between you? I mean, we, we funny enough when we were practicing at the beginning, uh, we didn't train much together because Stefan was a lot with David, and for me, in my head, he was too. You know, was too far so i i trained with the, uh, sebastian and Miguel. but yeah in my mind i just wanted because i know stefan was always ahead in my mind i just wanted to catch up with him every time and every time so every time i hear we do he does something like okay let's check it out and then i, I know i'm just better but when i was younger i uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think i mean it's a, it's a common thing i think for for a younger brother to to look up the the list and then just try and catch up with him mm. and, uh, because yeah he was clearly better technically and physically so yeah it was a good inspiration for me yeah so i mean i guess that gap the slight gap in training and age um and the fact that you were training separately meant that there wasn't so much of that so it's probably more supportive than than competitive which is which is a good thing right yeah i've never felt the threat i've never felt that <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> um, the, the, the competition was between us three, Sebastian, Mikel, and me. It was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. We, we never know how the day would end. 
because but, uh, yeah, it, it I mean, anywhere. At, it's true at the beginning. First of all, I was three years older than you, and at at that age, it it, it does. It, there's a difference, you know. Three years nowadays, it's just it's probably better for you. Yeah, <laughs> back then it was better we, for me. But the uh, so I, the we get. yeah, and I was training with David on my own, and and it was a lot of intense. It was intense true parkour and anyone was just discovering from, from 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 afar but then he he started to, to catch up eventually and then we get, get get really good and then we david and i felt that the the youth was coming and catching up and then it also gave us a boost and 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 it motivated us to, to train eventually because uh, th those guys because they didn't train with us, so all they was hearing about was stories about oh David did that and Steph did that or those those guys are training this way, and you know it start to the stories start to change and and you, you like from from jumping from a two meter two meters high wall uh, in the you know the story changed and in their head it it arrived in their ears to like oh they jump from four <laughs> meters high so everything they heard was was deformed was was changed and and and. Um, Oh shit! I forgot the word, but uh, distorted. Yes. Yeah. And then so they train with that aim. Oh, they did that. They did that. And so they train with that aim. And then well, well no, 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 we haven't done that, guys. Chill. <laughs> and then eventually, what well, it was, uh, it, it it's like, like for the one thousand drops, man. We heard it, it was in a row, but they they had a break. Sebastian, Sebastian told me they had a break in between or something, and we did the one thousand from the highest ones. Like uh, two times we did it. Oh. So Just you did, because uh, it was. A... You did a thousand drops from yeah. high. what height was it? How high? The first one I did. No, I yeah, think you did twice. One. <laughs> it was tw yeah, it was about two meters high. Two meters, a bit more than two meters high. A bit more than two meters, yes. Yeah. Because we because, I could reach yeah. it like uh, hanging. Yeah, it's, it's like I had two... to jump. No, I had to jump, man. I think someone 230 or something. Well, okay. Maybe two feet. So two meters, 30, two meters 30, you stood on top of that and you jumped off. Was there, did you roll or was it just you just absorb it with the legs? It depends on the shape. No, I mean, I'm more, mainly I didn't roll. Okay. So, so a thousand times a two meter 30 jump. Yeah. No break. No. And you did that twice? I was, yeah, man. First time I did it with Sebastian Goudeau. And it wasn't enough because I did it again with Stefan. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like the story was, we were just having a walk in the woods, having a walk in the wood, talking like a normal Sunday, like normal people. And suddenly, I don't know, we saw that 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 slopes, and then we say, oh, that's where they did the thousand jumps, right? Yeah. And I don't know what happened. We started to do it. I think I I, I, I said that, right? You and I said, oh, let's do it. I don't it. know. I don't remember, but I remember you. You yes, you, because like I said at that, night and then. And then you, you, you've done them before and you didn't stop me. That's why I, I, I was really unhappy with that because said, you did them and you let me drag you into this again. And I was stupid. <laughs> so, and it was a long day because I didn't understand what it means to do those thousand jumps in terms of time and, and what kind of mental state I'd be in after a few hours. Uh, yeah, again, one, one of those silly things. Done. I think that's how, I mean, that's how. At that time, I didn't know why really I did this, but, uh, it's... but but that's why I was mad at you because you you've done it before. It's not like you didn't know, because I didn't know. So that's fine. So, okay, yeah, it was just good. for the fun, man. It was just for the love, the challenge. <laughs> he knew. And actually, I'm the one who didn't finish them. He finished them. I had to stay and then and then you know support. Yeah, you bought me food at night. <laughs> I stopped around I don't know seven hundred eight eight hundred. How long? How long did it take the whole process? I don't know the whole afternoon because we are the early afternoon, I think. And yeah, I, because I, I, yeah, Cisco was passed around. He say hi. What? The, how long did you? I finished here, around like? nine or ten. I don't remember. Yeah, something like that. Maybe okay. yeah, b between between seven, six, and ten hours. But you know the yeah. one thousand thing you've done it with the muscle ups. It never ends. It just never ends, man. It's yeah. And that challenge began began in the same way, right? That all these challenges always begin in a very oh God, in a very yeah. Yeah, in a very true. stupid, uh, unassuming way that pr that proliferates and snowballs because of the people involved. Their minds sort of 
uh, come up with craziness and then someone thinks about doing it and then it's it's just suddenly it's a real thing and you're going to do it. Um, I think a lot of the old challenges came around in that way. They're not like, people don't sit down and plan them out as part of their training. No, no, no. It's just like, hey, let's do that. Otherwise, you would then do it, man, because after the first 10, you just regret. <sighs> uh, I think that's the, only, that's the only kind of, of weapon we had is ignorance. You don't know that's where you do it <laughs> until you know. Yeah. But then you find out what can be done, right? That's, you're right. But that ignorance allows us to find out what can be done because who would have known that you could do a thousand drop jumps or a thousand muscle ups yeah, yeah, true. Um, until someone tried it and it's the only like people a, stupid enough to try it were the people that don't know. So, <laughs> um, so it's actually quite yeah. sensible. Do you guys, when you, when you teach uh, parkour or any of the teaching you've done, this is uh, an interesting question, I think, for, for coaches from the old school. Do you guys get your students to do things like that? At some level, yes. It depends on the level. students. Not, not the thousands, because yeah, uh, there's on, a time uh, issue. But uh, I think, yeah, at some level, I want them to experience this. I mean, you, you know that, but you, sometimes you decide a challenge. And when you start, you, you become scared because you know either you're going, you won't be able to complete or you, it's going to take the whole day. And I think this feeling of fear when you start a challenge is good. So I want them to experience that. Like I, I give them numbers, they're all like, oh, yes, this is going to be like impossible. I want them to feel. Mm. But they start doing that feels impossible and then they do it. And then uh, this is so, yeah, this is a great feeling to, to, to accomplish something you felt impossible at the beginning. So I want them to experience this. So it can be not a 1,000 jumps, but it can be, a, even so for some people, it can be 10 muscle ups and it's enough. Mm. If, if, yeah, so I want them to feel this. Okay, so you do, because you guys probably, you know, did it by yourselves rather than being told to do it, so to speak. Yeah. I, mean, I, suppose, I suppose David and, and uh, would, would, have, would have been pushing you as well. But um, uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's different between when you choose to do a challenge like that and when someone tells you to yeah. do it. But, but the outcome can be the same, I think, yeah, in that you're, they're, they're going into something that su supposedly they think is impossible to begin with. And then by the end, they achieve it. That, that is a very powerful um, experience, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But it, 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 you have to be aware of your student when you do that as a coach and then make sure you don't make this experience a trauma and then, you know, uh, the opposite effect that you want. And, and, and yeah. Um, <laughs> here <it> comes, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I, as a teacher, I'm, I'm very focused on the needs and the goals yeah. of the students and, and, and according to those needs and goals, I will provide what's you know what I feel is right for you, and I won't raise the intensity if I understand that that's not for you and you're not ready. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna do more damage. Um, I've learned that you know I'm 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 speaking like this today with years of, of experience in teaching. My first class in London was a uh, two hours quadrupedal um, <laughs> with, with, with students who have never done parkour before. So, <laughs> and some some of them really enjoyed it. And probably one of the memories that will last forever. Um, but some of them and probably didn't come uh, back. Yeah, no, 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 this, too. Um, this is how you choose people also, because yeah, parkour, like we all, every time we say parkour can be for anybody, but everybody can do parkour, but it's not for everybody. It's, it's true. Yeah. And these kinds of challenges, it can make, it can make, uh, I can, actually, it can help them. Like, oh, no, it's not for me. And then you move on to something else. <laughs> Because like uh, I don't know, some, you don't have to do parkour. So uh, for me, it's my it's my view. Huh? But it, if you choose to embrace parkour, I, yeah, you can. But there is, this is it. This is parkour, and then uh, it's like that. You, you you can decide to be in it or not. It's just up to you, man. But after that, you have to take care of the the the, the, the injuries. But I mean, parkour for me is a package, and it's like that. And it's not meant for everybody. You don't have to practice parkour, but if you do, this is it. This is what it can bring you. Mm. Then it's your choice to take it or not. But this is this is uh, this is. The no, I, I agree. That there will always be an element of challenge in my classes. That's for sure. A challenge, the concept of challenge, and and is part of parkour. Now, the intensity of the challenge, I will, I will, you know. Yeah, yeah sure. You have to adapt. Otherwise, it's you're just killing people, like you, you did uh, during your warm-ups in London. <laughs> Like uh, for two hours warm up, everybody has cramps. Now let's jump, guys. <laughs> half an hour warm up. God damn it, man. I was so mad at Chris <laughs> when I was doing these warm ups. Like, Chris, are we serious, man? You're, you're fucking up people in 30 minutes. 
And then you're, you're asking them to do jumps and plyos, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, that was our way. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was there was a science behind it. There is a science. There is a yeah, there is yeah. a me- there is a method to the madness. I um, didn't have the memo, man. <laughs> You may not have had the memo, but there was a there is a method to it. Yeah, our, our view is that if you could if you could get through the warm up and then continue, it meant that you were probably strong enough to do the jumps, to do the training. Um, and if you if the warm up finished you off, then you just needed to do more warm ups. Yeah, before you could, that's before one you way could to protect train. people yeah. from jumping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it worked. You know, I mean, it worked in that way that it was extreme. You know, in some ways, it it goes against it went against some of the sports science at the time, actually, which which has now been probably updated. But um, uh, it worked, and it produced amazing loads of amazing athletes. So um, you know, it works for 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 a body of the population. But some people, yeah, some people wouldn't like that and wouldn't go for it, which is to- totally fair. Not not, not nah, every discipline well, yeah. is for every person. There is no obligation. Yes. Um, so, how, do you guys think you will ever stop training in parkour? This is another question that, that I think is interesting. Uh, it's hard. It's hard because parkour for me, yeah, no, I, I no, it's like hard. I've tried, I've tried. But I no, but it, it, it will sound like Van Damme. For, <laughs> for me, parkour is not even something. It's not even real for me. It's, uh, it's just <laughs> he just bay on his chair. He can't. <laughs> <laughs> he can't answer the question. It's too serious. No, I just. Uh, no, it's just parkour for me, just who I am. So it's very hard to separate the jumps from everything else. So no, I won't stop parkour, but the jump, no, I, I don't think I will ever stop jumping. Every time, every once in a while, I will ha- I will want to, to jump again. Okay, Steph? Yeah, I think so too. I, I, I don't see myself um, stopping training ever, but I'm also not close to the idea if I have to, or if, if, yeah. if, if, if I find something way better that helps me way more in many ways, then and it makes sense then to stop parkour. I, I hope I I will find the courage to you know let it go um, because there's a lot of stubborn people in parkour when we we build that willpower and that strong mindset yeah, and all true. that. But then you can get attached to it and then that could actually be a bad thing that could prevent you to try other stuff that could prevent you. To grow more, just because you're too yeah. stubborn and 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 parkour is here to challenge you. And if you get good at parkour and you start to be confident, you can and you start to create a comfort zone in parkour, and and you're cocky and all, then you lose the essence of it, which is you know throwing shit at you and then and then deal with it. Um, so parkour is not the answer, forever. It, it's an answer. So I feel like I will. Keep training parkour because I have an emotional attachment to it and it's part of my life and it's just healthy, you know, physically speaking and mentally speaking. But I'm I'm open to be obsessed with something else. Right. But you haven't found it yet, whereas Johan clearly has found his next obsession. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so what's the next step in the goal for Johan? What will you be? Because you're competing now in France, but I know you're you're mainly interested in teaching. Yeah, so do you hear me? Yeah. So um competing actually I'm competing because if I want to start my my course as to become coach, I have to actually it's like parkour man. Golf for me is one of the toughest um you have one of the toughest prerequisites to start a course. It, you have to be quite a good a good player to become a coach. So I I'm I'm getting into competition first because I have never experienced it. You know, in parkour we don't have I mean you have now but Back then, back then we don't we didn't have any competitions and i i wasn't interested in this so now i want to experience this to to know how i am how i behave how i um, deal with pressure and uh, competition so i do it with for my own and i do it also because i need to have a prerequisite to start my my course but yeah in the end i've always have an affinity with coaching and i think in in parkour i i I could, I think I could help people with my coaching. And uh, I, at least I felt when I was coaching, I could sense people and I could sense what they needed and I could help them in their way, in their path. So I think coaching is something I have and uh, I still want to, to, to coach. So for now, golf makes sense to me because I, I, yeah, I'm obsessed with golf and uh, I, I think I can help people through golf and weirdly enough, maybe people think, yeah, it's just about 
sports, but I think I can give more than just techniques. And uh, as we know about parkour, I can uh, help people getting better with techniques, but I can give so much more with them without knowing. So, so it's, um, it's just coaching as a whole that I love. So for now, I, I will go through park golf and I will see what, what happens. And I mean, we asked this of uh, Steph when when we interviewed him a little while ago. But uh, you know, you've had a long life in parkour. You've obviously been there from the very early days. You've seen the rise and you know the rise and rise of parkour. You've seen it change and evolve. You've been involved in some of the some of the biggest high profile media elements. Um, you've taught all over the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've you, you've had a lifetime of parkour pretty much since you were a kid to to now. So. What is your, if you, if you were going to sort of condense that into one message to give to people listening, to practitioners uh, listening to this, what would, your, what would your message be from your experience of 20 years of parkour? Me? Yeah. Fuck that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Check the flow and fuck that shit. Uh, honestly, I would say don't take too much. I, I would say... Because as Stefan said, parkour can feed some can feed some uh, dark sides, and I would say mainly you have to remain playful and uh, yeah, uh, you, you have to n- not take it too seriously. Even if you're pushing yourself and, and want want to go very far, you have to still be playful and and remember that you have to to have enthusiasm. This is the word. You have to to have enthusiasm when you practice. Yes, and I would I would always say yeah, keep, keep it plain, playful and and open minded when you practice and and that's it. Don't take it too much seriously. And if sometimes you're you're down, you're down. And if you want to stop, you can stop. There's there's nothing that tells you you have to practice parkour or, or your life. And yeah, be open minded and playful and and that's it. Uh, for me, this is the most important. Try and uh, remember why you well, remember why you train. Yeah, why do you train? Is this to bring you something positive or, or not? Very good. And mm-hmm. Stefan, anything to update on that? Anything to update on your message? No, I guess I was uh, probably say the same thing as I said last time. Is is uh, yeah? Is is training parkour helping you in any way? being a better person or having a better life. If it does, cool. If not, change. Change the tune. Um, yeah, fuck that shit. And, then, and, yeah. and that's, I guess, that's why you want to say, don't take it too seriously. Um, yeah. Yeah. Parkour for me, again, is a tool, an available tool for, for anyone who wants help and find help in training parkour. Uh, and if it doesn't, then, you know, think about, something else but uh, yeah keep the smile being happy and all that it's it's essential but um if if parkour is only a way to look good uh, in front of your friends or whoever just to, to boost your ego or, or, or feel fake with fake confidence then it's, it's not going to help you and in that case i would say uh you know reflect on your why and then make sure it's appropriate for you and it helps you and it helps you in any in any way or form uh, in your life or you as a person. If it doesn't, then think about it and probably time to switch. Oh, it, it can it can show you dark sides and you have to deal with it. Because for me, it showed me dark sides and I I, I cope with it and I like yeah. okay. But I, if you're I can be like if, that, you're, if you're aware of that, then you improve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of you're, course, you're, you're with that intention <laughs> of, of getting better. First, you have to be aware. Yeah, and, you, that, and that's this, this is this is what matters. What do you want? For me, I want to get better. Yeah, what do you want? The whole. So hey, go, go back to uh, I think uh, the monkey's back. The, I think I finished with this. Line. Yeah, yeah. What do you want so for what, you? What, what, what do you want for you? <laughs> but this is, I mean, this is down to it, man. Uh, being uh, parkour, writing, uh, surfing, any, anything. What do you want for you? The cool thing is, if if today you want to start parkour, you have a lot of available resources uh, to train, to know about the, the history. Um, I think that's a cool thing. So you have a lot of content available. To help you decide whether or, or you know you want to you want to start or not. Yeah, I've heard about cool kids, parkour generations. <laughs> oh, that actually leads into an, an, another question, which I will make the final one, which is: um, uh, Will we see you guys both at Rendezvous in London next year? 
Yeah, unless there's a August. Prob- yeah, it's not. It's in August, middle weekend of August. We obviously this year had got we missed it because of COVID, but um, a lot of yeah. people, a lot of people would like to see you next year if you are yeah. if you're both available. Why not? Yeah, we'd love to, man. Again, if there's no COVID situation or any you know obstacle in the way, I'd be happy to to be there. For sure. Yeah, me too. Next year, I won't because now uh, yeah, my last son is one month old. Anyway, with COVID, is is down. But next year should be fine. Cool. Would be cool. Awesome. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we we'll teach people the, the panda roll and stuff like that. This is going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can make that happen. You, you're going to uh, have an FPS module. Yeah, yeah. FPS module. Can we do that? You see, no, you see this wall? You see your head? Bah, smash it against the wall. Fuck that no, shit. No one will know what they're signing up for, but um, <laughs> they'll, uh, they'll have a good experience, I'm sure. So. Cool. Well, it's been really good to have you both um, on the on the webinar. Thank you very much for your time, um, both of you. Um, super cool. Yo, if people want to find out what you're doing, is there any way they can find information on you? Uh, you, you, you link my Instagram, yes. I'm, a, I, I'm yes. learning Instagram. I'm not yep. so... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not natural. Yeah, we can but, uh, <laughs> It's in the family, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, basically Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But... Uh, at the yeah. moment, because I, I'm into, uh, like, I'm, yeah, I don't have So if they, if they search Yo, Yo and Vigru on um, on YouTube, they'll find your, your channel where yeah, you're yeah, posting actually, videos. Yeah, I started and, the yeah. channel. And it's, uh, let's see, it's, it's mainly golf, but also oh, Just in case, you know, Tiger's Wood, uh, Tiger Woods uh, management, management is listening to this podcast. Yeah, if they're listening Tigers, to it. <laughs> if they want to do Tiger's game with a uh, Paco influence golf training, then... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Jerry, I think he, he kicked out the, uh, his coaches. He tried uh, on his own now, and he's, he's doing much better. Oh, oh that's interesting. Yeah. A whole, that's a subject for a whole other podcast. Yeah, man, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, coaching in golf is, uh, is an issue sometimes. People don't understand coaching. Well, I said that, that's, a, that's across all sports, all disciplines, right? Yeah, coaching, I think coach. so. Yeah. There's good and bad coaches. So. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time, guys. We have run out. Thank you yeah. very much for everyone who tuned in to listen or watch live. Um, the we will, we will um, obviously put this recording up on YouTube so that people will be able to see it whenever they want uh, to just, tune back in and watch the watch the highlight moments. Um, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> there's no drama, nothing. <laughs> And maybe we will get uh, the guys back again in the future uh, when we drag in some others. I've already spoken to Mike Christie, actually, the director of Jump London. Um, ah, cool. How and, is he and, doing? And Mike, he's he's good, and he's he's um, he is going to be a guest in the future on the uh, on the webinar. So we we will have yeah, Mike awesome. Christie at some stage, uh, and then we'll get the real truth of the documentary rather than all the lies that you guys peddle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would be cool to hear his thoughts on what yeah. did, did did he think back then when he got this you know project of Jump London that how much impact it will have or did, did he plan or did he have any like crazy ideas about yes I'm sure it's gonna be a hit and it's gonna help I'm just curious to hear his thoughts of, of um, yeah um, what, do you, what, do you, what did he think back then when he started to do this and if he had any suspicions of, oh, of yeah, like a fuck, impact I'm some kids shit uh, <laughs> I have to go to France <laughs> they don't speak English yeah maybe, maybe it was like oh <laughs> <laughs> well potentially i mean potentially um potentially we could do another group one um and get you guys involved in that because then you can ask them these questions yourselves mm. um yeah. which would be pretty cool so but yeah thank you everyone for mm. listening in yeah, um sure and um we've i'm sure we've uh i'm sure we've bored you to tears but uh but yeah it's great to have these <laughs> these two on so make sure you follow them online um they're both still active in their various disciplines um and uh, we will link to that in the video as well we'll be back soon hopefully with another very cool guest or two um and make sure you have a good day thank you very much for coming and thank you to both of you thank you man thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure thanks for having me having us and uh all the best man Cool. Thank and you to guys. everybody who's listening, all the best with your training, with your life. All the best. Keep it up. And remember, fuck that shit. <laughs>